Hello and welcome back to Business Matters of the Hindu with me, K. Bharat Kumar. Last week, the auctions for telecom spectrum, including for 5G, conducted by the government, came to an end. In this episode, let's take a very quick look into how this technology works, what it can do for us, and some commercial aspects of the auction itself. 5G or 5th generation telecom technology allows for much higher efficiency of network usage. Technical studies put it at around 100 times more than what your 4G networks give you today, which means greater bandwidth, faster downloads, and low latency. Latency meaning the time taken for data to travel from source to destination. Four G technology that we use today uses longer wavelengths at lower frequencies, while five G, on the other hand, uses higher frequencies but shorter waves. As five G technology uses waves up to maximum of ten millimeters, compared with four G that uses waves in tens of centimeters, far more transmission antennae are required to propagate five G signals. But five G antennae are so small that they can be mounted on uh, street lamps, traffic signals. And assuming there's no impact on environment, even treetops. That brings us to the next question: What can 5G do for us? Companies that are involved in the research of 5G technology will have us believe that it will enable things that we haven't dreamed of yet. But let's just take two examples that have actually been shown in real-world studies. UK 5G, a network that aims to promote innovation and research in the arena of 5G, tells us that remote robotic surgery has been made possible. It cites the example of a doctor in the People's Liberation Army Hospital in Beijing, China, using remote robotics operating on a patient in another hospital 3,000 kilometers away. Can you imagine this? The second example is in the area of manufacturing. Companies involved in research tell us that manufacturing will change in such a way that we couldn't have imagined before. Before I looked up the details, I was wondering how can manufacturing change because of 5G technology's ability to quickly transfer data almost in real time. After all, if I'm making the door for a car manufacturer, how will my manufacturing process change? Here's how: Telecom equipment major Ericsson collaborated with the Fraunhofer Institute of Production Technology to prove how manufacturing, for example, with bladed discs or blisks that go into aircraft jet engines, can improve for the better. Bladed discs are of great significance. The quality of a bladed disc can determine the safety of an aircraft while in flight. In fact, one of the unfortunate air crashes that happened in 1996 in Pensacola, Florida in the US was attributed to the poor quality of these discs. The problem with the manufacture of these discs is that unless a certain portion of manufacture is over, you wouldn't be able to tell whether the quality is good enough or not. And because the milling process for these discs can take upwards of one day and sometimes running up to 100 hours the rework required can go up to as much as 25% so here's how 5g technology worked as part of the study the researchers embedded a sensor and a communication device inside the milling machine for real time control the information that the sensor conveys has to be processed and acted upon within 1 millisecond 5g technology enabled the closure of this loop For this factory alone, the savings amounted to about Euro 27 million in one year. Now extrapolate this to the entire manufacturing sector across the globe. Can you think of one more area that 5G technology will enable, but which has not been possible till now? If you are thinking of autonomous driving, that is vehicles being driven without drivers, you bang on. How can 5G technology help here? After all, when autonomous vehicles are going down a road and if they sense an object, coming in between and they have to prevent a crash communication technology is very important that sensor has to convey it to the central processing unit and the car has to decide absolutely in real time without time lag saying let's stop right now apply the brakes the other use cases are that autonomous vehicles will be able to sense pedestrians who may be crossing its path because of the signals that their smartphones are emanating so the world seems wide open before 5g Let's see how it comes about. What else can 5G technology do for you as a subscriber? Industry watchers are hoping that telephony over the internet can improve vastly. Right now, when you make calls over apps such as WhatsApp or Telegram, there's always a time lag. You say something, and the person at the other end hears it after a very short time lag. 
but because 5G uses networks very very efficiently and there's far better transfer of data, industry watchers hope that such time lags won't be there. But this comes with the condition because 5G operates at higher frequencies and shorter wavelengths, they will find it difficult to penetrate walls of buildings. That's when these small antennae that we talked about on street lamps and traffic signals, your service provider has to ensure that there are adequate number of them so that your services go uninterrupted. Now, let's take a look at the auctions that got over last week. Who put in how much? Reliance Geo put in just over 88,000 crore. Bharti Airtel came in second with about half that value put in for their bids. Vodafone brought up a distant third at around 19,000 crore. Adani Group, which was the first time entrant into these telecom spectrum auctions, took away a small portion of spectrum ostensibly for captive use for its own businesses. Of the total spectrum one, as expected, Reliance Geo walked away with the lion's share at 48%, Bharti Airtel got about 39% and Vodafone about 12%. Of the total spectrum available for sale from the government, 70% was sold and raked in about 1.5 lakh crore for collections for the government. Some say that this is a testament to the overall improvement in the telecom industry's health. Let's take a look at a bit of history to see how these cash pains for the industry have been eased over the past year or so. The telecom industry has been plagued by litigation between the government and telecom operators this has placed a huge strain on the cash resources of telecom carriers. The center's move last year to ease regulatory norms around payment of dues has actually helped. This included a four-year moratorium on outstanding payments and the redefinition of adjusted gross revenues to exclude non-telecom earnings going forward. This has allowed service providers a breather and helped them attract investor interest. This has also helped them spread liabilities over a staggered period. Recently, companies have also raised tariffs and that has helped lift average revenue per user or ARPU in industry jargon, boosting margins. The government's policy decision to return bank guarantees to telecom firms has helped improve their eligibility for debt. This is crucial for capital expenditure. And with spectrum usage charges also binned, the enhanced flexibility likely allowed enthusiastic participation from all three private players. This is a far cry from the not too distant past when the very survival of companies such as Vodafone Idea was under threat. Why did some of the spectrum go unsold? Problems with reserve pricing. A look at the data will tell you that the 3.3 GHz and 26 GHz bands were snapped up at the reserve price across most license service areas. Whereas those that are sub GHz, that is less than 1 GHz, had trouble. The 600 MHz saw no bidders at all. 700 megahertz, 60% remained unsold. You may remember earlier from our discussion that bands in the lower frequencies are able to penetrate building walls. They are also useful in rural penetration. So the cause of subscribers could have been well served if the operators have found the pricing good enough to snap these up as well. We may say that 70% of the spectrum available for sale had been sold. But guess what? Only 35% of the reserve price of 4.3 lakh crore that is 1.5 lakh crore is what we mentioned, only that would come into the government coffers and that too over a staggered period of time. So what does the future hold for our subscribers? Even though the government has promised allocation of Spectrum 1 by operators within this month itself, don't wait with bated breath for immediate and widespread availability of 5G. Operators will start implementing the technology and then learn what's good and what's not so good in the real world. Till then, 5G and 4G will continue to coexist. Remember, 4G was first demonstrated in India in 2012 via dongles and modems. Only by 2016 did all operators end up offering 4G mobile telephony services. Till the next episode of Business Matters, it's goodbye from us. Have a lovely week ahead.